Okay, and now I'd like to introduce our Sunday keynote speaker. Uh, Greg is a lead developer at General Electric's smart lighting team. Um, he works with a fantastic team of devs uh, that enable you to wow your in-laws with your voice-controlled lights. Uh, last year, he gave a well-received talk here at Pi Ohio about uh, building tech for uh, people with disabilities as he witnessed his own father's struggles with ALS. Um, today, he's going to talk to you about his continuing work to uh, form a startup that is dedicated to improving the lives of the most vulnerable in our society um, and how the most stressful 30 days of his life helped him discover what really matters. Welcome, Greg Svoboda. Oh, thank you. Thanks, everybody. It's, a, it's an absolute honor to be here um, to the Pi Ohio staff. Thank you. Uh, it's been just, it's a joy. And this is, this is the first, I think this is my fourth or fifth Pi Ohio. And this was the first year that I walked in and I was like, I'm going to meet people I know. Ooh, it was cool. Like, it was, that's really cool to be part of a community like that um, and to get hugs from people that I have met in the past. Um, let me uh, talk about myself. Uh, my name is Greg. I work for this company. It's a small um, startup that you may have never heard of. Um, uh, GE actually is pretty cool. They're actually very cool. Um, they, uh, I might have had the same feeling you had, like GE, like old guard, right? But um, they realized that uh, they, um, that smart home, smart lighting kind of thing is, needs to be rapidly iterating and moving fast, and so they kind of moved us into a little team, and we're just a, a few developers working um, together and uh, uh, on this, like, rapidly iterating and writing code and um, chatting with uh, Google, like, every day. There are actually people that work at Google. It's not just, like, robots behind a curtain, which I thought. Um, they... Uh, um, they're actually pretty cool, and uh, making our light bulbs work with uh, voice commands and things like that, and um, Bluetooth mesh, and all that. And um, when I was first learning uh, like hexadecimal, people were like, oh, "You don't have to have to use hexadecimal. Wait to get Bluetooth." <laughs> like, <laughs> um, it's a. Uh, um, well, G is a cool company. They paid for my hotel room. They don't know that yet, but they will find out <laughs> like soon. And, uh, um, and Pavela is a uh, group here. This is, um, this is my sign that I really I put a lot of work in. It has no purpose other than it was just a lot of work to make. So I was, look at my work. Um, and uh, it, uh, Pavela is, um, my friend says, you Ellist Island the word, which was, it's a Finnish word that means to serve or servant. And, uh, but it has like, it's spelled differently. So I thought, well, let's make it easy to spell. And, um, and uh, it started last year, and it's a, uh, uh, group to build tech to affordably help um, track and support the care of the most vulnerable in our society um, and uh, for in-home care or um, in a nursing facility and things like that to, um, to ease the lives of the caregivers and better the lives of the uh, individuals receiving the care. Uh, so this month has been the hardest month of my life. Um, and I want to uh, talk about it for a minute. Um, this is a picture of my dad. He's the reason why Pavela even started. Um, he, has, um, he had ALS, um, and you'll see where I'm going with that. Oh, nice, very ingenu in, um, ingenuity. Uh, I was going to say ingenuitous, but that doesn't make sense. Um, and uh, he had ALS, and I say had, because I found out at the beginning of this, uh, this month that dad doesn't have long um, to live. Uh, he's a good man. Um, he's reading with his kids here, and you can see his hand sort of curled up right there. It's, and uh, he had to have the, the girls flip the pages for him because he couldn't lift his arms. And uh, um, it was a beautiful uh, passing. And I, um, I used to joke with my wife that I want my passing to be sudden and shocking um, and uh, with not a long suffering. I want her to look out the window, and I'm just like, like slumped over in the lawnmower. Just like going over people's yards and like through fences and stuff. Um, but seeing my dad's fasting, I said, okay, it'd be okay to be surrounded by my f um, family and the people that love me. Um, and uh, um, he died uh, a, a week or so into the month of July. Uh, 
And then I thought, you know, it'd be cool to have a baby 36 hours after my dad's uh, memorial. Um, so we uh, welcomed uh, Ava um, into the world. Uh, she's here. And to add to my four girls, no, three girls. Well, four girls include my wife, but um, three girls. Um, I have a lot of girls, and uh, I like it. Um, people are like, oh, you <laughs> Money for, you know, wait till you pay for weddings. I was like, I can't think there's money for weddings. It's, <laughs> um, so I want to talk about, uh, oh, well, so after my dad passed, um, the next day we went out to a park, my family, and we had a picnic, and we flew a kite, and it was just this beautiful day. And, you know, imagine I'm laying on, gr on grass, right? And I'm laying next to my daughter, Sarah, she's three, and we're flying a kite. And uh, I said, kind of teared up for a moment, because it's literally the day after. And I said, Sarah, I miss, I miss Grandpa. And he said, she's, she kind of came up on one elbow like this. And she goes, do you miss your daddy? And I was like, I do. <laughs> she puts her hand on my shoulder, and she goes, at least your mom's not dead. <laughs> um, <laughs> true story. True story. Um, <laughs> See, I'm not the only one with a dark sense of humor in the room. So um, I love that. Lo loss can be, like, clarifying to you. It can, it can um, hone your focus, and you see, like, beauty around you, and you see all these good things, and my voice is cracking because um, just so much beauty, right? And uh, um, I, I, uh, I want to, in a room this big, I realize that I'm not the only person having a hard month, right? Um, and I want to say this to you. You are good. You have value, not because of anything you've done. Um, but because you exist, there's no garbage human being, except JavaScript developers and um, <laughs> JavaScript developers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't, whatever. Um, and uh, um, uh, during this month, I also had multiple um, meetings with uh, um, us, uh, potential partners and. Um, volunteers because we can't pay anyone for Pavella and uh, it was just like a very stressful month um, and uh, a tweet popped up on my phone and it was Pi Ohio saying like, we're pleased to announce Greg's vote to give him the keynote and I literally driving and looking at my phone guilty it's charged and uh, I kind of got like really like <sighs> you know and um, my my daughter uh, Isabella she goes is everything okay you know and she says um I was like, well, Daddy has to give a big speech. And she's like, Daddy, you're, 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 fam you're, fam you're famous. You're, fam you're as famous as Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> and I was like, oh, honey, like, he's a lot more famous than I am. <laughs> and she goes, why? He gave a speech. You're giving a speech. Um, <laughs> and uh, true, true story. He gave a speech. Um, <laughs> it's a little more be a little more famous than this one. Um, and, uh, uh, it, but if my talk can be, if anything, um, even slightly, even a hundredth of a thousandth of a percent uh, in the same vein as his um, to uh, encourage and to um, bring the people together and to help the broken, and, uh, then I've succeeded. Um, but I also hope to piss off many of you. Um, I realize that if I give a keynote where everyone loves it, um, I've failed. Um, I actually want to annoy many of you. I hope um, after this you get to go out and have a chat with your team and talk about how much you hated it or whatever, right? I've, I judge good art by saying, does it make me feel anything? Even if I walk there and I, if I walk up to it and I go, I hate this. At least it made me feel something, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like the painting that was hang, hanging in my Holiday Inn um, <laughs> that, you know, makes you feel nothing. Um, and plus, my mom sent me this text message, so I don't even care. I don't care, okay? <laughs> Um, and uh, um, so let's dive in. We have a problem in software development in our teams, in, honestly, in corporate America, in team life in general, right? We have a problem. And um, uh, so I was Googling for some uh, research, and I found this, uh, this, this. Um, <laughs> that's literally the answer. No. 
which is classic software development. Please flesh out this thought. I'm struggling. I don't know. Obviously, this person like, I struggle with depression and want to learn it a little bit. And they're like, no. <laughs> we, um, you know, uh, so uh, like if you go to Reddit's R programming humor, you'll find um, jokes like this. Um, uh, this is, uh, why does he look, this is Elon Musk, why does he look older in the first photo? He <laughs> stop programming. <laughs> um, and uh, this one, like uh, developers at the beginning of the project and developers at the end. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny, like it's, you know, it was like, I feel like a crazy person um, working with my team and whatever. Um, but there's also like a darker side of it, right? That like people aren't um, realizing, you know, like of um, something that's broken. And uh, uh, so this chart is from the CDC and it talks about uh, um, suicide rates um, increasing since 2012, I believe is what it was. And uh, it's hard to get out the grids, but we're one of the dotted ones, which is right here, Ohio, 31 to 37% increase. And uh, it's, this is, I mean, you know, like, this is like a problem, right? And the, um, the uh, Society, Society for Advancing Science, um, Advancing Science Serving Society, AAAS, um, and uh, whose motto is, don't call us ass, um, <laughs> is, uh, it's as um, suicide more prevalent than homicide, but most Americans don't know it. Um, uh, there's something broken, and the thing is that it's so broken that we actually think it's normal. Right? This is Milton Friedman, he's an economist. Um, there's one and only one social responsibility of business, to use the resources, um, to use its resources to engage in activities designed to increase its profits, profits so long as it stays within the rules of the game. And you're like, who's Milton Friedman? This, he said this quote in 1970, four years later we gave him the Nobel Prize in economics. Okay? So like, this is our modus operandi, right? this system. And uh, it's grinding people up and it's, it's hurting them. Our cultures are so weak, we veered away from doing the right thing in favor of doing the thing that is right for me. Um, I met Fred Armisen from SNL. Do you know Fred Armisen? Um, randomly at a Starbucks in Portland, Oregon. Um, and uh, he's like, how you doing? And I was like, what are you talking? I'm good. And he's like, and I had my daughter in a stroller. And he's like, what's her name? And I was like, Bell, Isabel. You funny, you. And, um, <laughs> And then I went and told everyone, including this conference, several, multi, it was like eight years ago, that I was like, Fred Armisen's amazing. You know why I say that? Because I have such low expectations of people in power that they would be even be, oh, he said, how are you doing? You're like, if you got, you know who else said, how are you doing? Ilya's wife. I'm not talking about that at Thanksgiving. You know, I don't like, um, uh, this is Esther Godfrey. She's going to give a talk about refactoring yourself, and I need to re refactor a little bit. And, um, <laughs> There, uh, check that out at 4 o'clock. So, uh, our cultures um, are just that weak and that broken. And uh, we had a meeting where, um, at a company I used to work for, OnShift, where um, Esther's husband, um, Ilya, uh, was my team lead. And I didn't deliver something. And it was my fault. And we stood before leadership. And Ilya was like, you know what? I thought we were able to ship this. And I didn't, like, he didn't throw me under the bus. And I was like, like, he defended me. He didn't even defend. He wasn't like, it's obviously Greg's fault, but I'm going to take. He didn't even, he was like, my fault. Like, leadership didn't even know. And I'm so blown away by that. Like, that happens so rarely. I mean, if you could think in your head, you're like, that happened once in my life that a leader did that for me. And uh, um, we have such low expectations of leaders. Um, I, uh, in a former life, um, I actually have a Master's of Divinity, a theology degree. Uh, this tiny little picture is a woodcutting of Jesus. And um, he met a guy who was paralyzed. And the man who was paralyzed says, um, you know, have mercy on me. I want to be healed. And Jesus asked this really weird question. He goes, do you want to get, do you want to get well? He's like, well, I'm not. Why would I want? Obvious. The answer should be obvious, right? But the truth of the matter is that resignation is dangerous. And it's a hell of a drug just to resign yourself to something. Right? Because the path forward, the healing path, means a lot of work ahead. And he said yes, and he is healed, um, according to the story. And, uh, um, but I'm telling you that the gig is up um, in our society. Like, what worked before isn't working, and it's breaking, and people are dying, and it's killing us. And uh, 
our biology, we're still, we haven't, we're still human beings. We're like, we were smashing rocks together to like break open nuts like 10 years ago or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, or something, I don't know, maybe a little more than 10 years ago. Um, and uh, we, um, we're still that, those creatures that need um, connection. Uh, we're tribal people looking for a place to belong, all of us. Um, look at this list. Does anybody know what these, this list is? Anybody venture a guess? They're the names of followers of bands. Um, this is uh, Mariah Kelly, Carey calls her followers lambs. That's uh, um, uh, Lady Gaga. Um, I don't know, and then it just goes Beyonce, Beliebers. Um, ridiculous, like, okay. Um, my favorites that some of them I didn't list, Cody Simpson calls their, his followers Simpsonizers, which seems like something you get charged for. Like, I don't know, like, <laughs> Clay Aiken calls his followers Claymates. Uh, Glee calls their followers Gleeks. Um, Paramore, Paramore calls their followers Parahors. And Green Day just calls their followers Idiots. Um, which, I love that. I love that, you know. Um, we're all looking for, um, you know, some of you um, are followers of Megan Trainer, and you're a Megatron. There are dozens of us, dozens! Um, and um, Arrested Development reference. Uh, creating a good culture is hard. It's really hard. And it's really, really freaking hard. It's super hard to have good culture. You have culture. Like, you have it. It's not like you don't have no culture. You, if you're in a group of people, you have culture. Um, and uh, what is the path forward? And I boiled it down, and I boiled it, and I boiled it, and boiled it, and, um, and I, I thought I made up this term, but I didn't. Um, it's called rehuman. I, I'm saying re re we need to rehuman. Um, and uh, so I was like, is this, does anybody, if you have a good idea, your next thought is, is this domain registered? Is that your second? Anybody here? Second thought? That's your second thought, yes. And I went and I was like, darn it, rehuman.org or .com is taken. And I went to it and it was like, I've never heard a website. I don't even know what they do, but I've never heard a website with more ridiculous. It was like, improving the human capital, something, something blockchain. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is like, this is not, this is the, not the point, right? Um, so I really, this is a term I learned when I was seminary. You know what this word is, paradox. Um, but I want to break it down for you because here's para, which is um, dual, um, and dox, which is glory, um, dual glory. And so here's, here's what I want to say. So earlier I said, you are valuable. You have intrinsic value as a human being because you exist. You are beautiful and unique and important, and we're glad you're here. That's, that's glory number one. Glory number two. The world owes you nothing at all. Um, I love that meme that went around the internet for a little while, and it was like, some of you haven't worked fast food, and it shows. Um, and, uh, like, the world owes you nothing. In fact, um, Seth uh, Godlin, Godlin, I, I, Godlin um, he says, like, not only does the world not owe you anything, you actually owe the world something. You won the life lottery, okay? You're a software developer in America. You can fart out the window and get another job offer. Um, <laughs> like, uh, like, it's, it's the, the getting's good right now. I mean, I'm a white Christian male. I understand my, the gig is up for us. Like, it was good. We had a good run. Um, but uh, uh, that gig is up. And, um, and so, and I, like, I don't know where I, you know, somehow I was like, oh, look at the color of my skin. I'm owed things. Um, you're not owed anything. In fact, you owe the world something because you won this life lottery. If you win the lottery among your family members, they're going to be like, hey, um, cool if you help out with my bills. And you would, right? Yes. And um, you won the life lottery. You owe the world something. And uh, um, we need to rehuman our teammates, rehuman our users. Um, and here's what I mean by that. Uh, Rehumaning starts with you. And it's not your leader's problem. If you're thinking, I'm not the leader of my team, I don't have to do that. It's the problem. It's not, that's a problem. Um, and it's, 
it, it starts with you, right? Be the change you want to see in the world. Um, I don't know, it was Gandhi or MLK or um, some other person that I really admire, um, and, uh, or Bono, and, uh, um, and it, it starts with you. The, your attitude matters very much. Will Phelps ran a study at the University of Southern Wales, in, uh, which is in Australia, in case you're wondering. Um, he, brought, he brought groups of people together to do a task, but he put a mole in there, and the mole um, was going to play different roles. The mole was going to be the jerk, um, aggressive, yet he was uh, defiant and deviant, the slacker, withholding effort, or the downer, like an Eeyore, kind of like, it'll never work, this is never going to work, you know? And, and he looked at their, like, how much work they could finish in time, right? And uh, he found that the, uh, the mole actually affected the group's 30 to 40 percent consistently less output, right? The loudest person in the room we often call alphas. And you know that the alpha is not necessarily a good thing when, when I say, when I say um, the next, you say alpha, there's another word that, that people say immediately after it. Ready? Alpha. <laughs> okay, there are different interpretations. <laughs> but male was what I was looking for, like alpha male. You know, like ooh, uh, alpha male. Like, um, I'm loudest, me loudest in room. People, you think I'm a leader and know what I'm doing because I'm standing up here with a microphone and I'm louder than you are. <laughs> so shut up with your ideas. It's, it's Greg time. And um, I'm, I'm not an alpha. Like, I'm, I mean, Ilya knows in the meetings. I'm, I'm like, okay, whatever works. You know, and, but we're like, oh, is that the opposite of alpha? Is that zeta? I don't know, whatever that is. Um, I'm not beta, I'm zeta. And um, like, I'm just not, I'm not, like, I don't, in meetings, I'm nervous about my, like, Kenny, I haven't been developing that long. I'm kind of new at this, right? Um, but in those groups that he studied, there was one group that he wrote a whole thing on, a true alpha. I'm going to call him a true alpha, this person. I don't even, I don't know their gender at all. I'm just saying. Um, and uh, the mole would act like a jerk, and the alpha would instantly react with warmth, deflecting the negativity and making a potentially unstable situation feel solid and safe. Basically, the alpha makes it safe, then turns to other people and asks, hey, what do you think about that? Um, the alpha succeeds without taking any of the actions we normally associate with a strong leader. The alpha doesn't take charge or tell anyone what to do. The alpha doesn't perform so much as create conditions for others to perform. Nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, I can't, I can't wait to be managed today. <laughs> like, you, um, you want to be led, right? I want to lead. I want to be a leader or be led by a good leader. Um, there is one true alpha in the room today that I can know for sure. Her name is Kenny. Kenny. Um, you should have audio that when you open the door, it goes, Kenny. Her talk yesterday was awesome. And um, it really was like, oh, it's so good, because I loved it, because I was like, ooh, it's exactly what I want to talk about. Um, uh, because Kenny did everything that a true alpha does, right? A true alpha is like admitting when they're not, they don't know something. It, the true alpha like ma mentors other people and brings them along with them and encourages them and says, if you supersede my abilities, I have succeeded. Like, I mean, tr I mean original alpha, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, uh, be man, oh, loud. Like, it does, it's not, um, it's, the gig is up on that. And uh, we need true alphas like this. And, uh, but don't get alpha confused with a-holes. <laughs> alphas, a-holes. I'm being subliminal here. <laughs> we were hiring rock star developers. We're looking for rock star developers for our team. So you mean unreliable? Super opinionated, ridiculous. Who builds ridiculous tools? That's a four-sided guitar. Um, <laughs> pip, pip install useless tool. And um, like, um, I was talking about him. I'm just kidding. And um, uh, you know, like, it's a, this is a rock star, right? I don't, I don't want rock stars, right? But in our current team environment and corporate structure, Kenny gets passed up because she's not the loudest in the room. Right? Um, and, uh, but like, 
he doesn't get passed up because like who can miss this guy's attention, right? This guy gets all the attention. And um, he's also awful to work with, oh, the worst, right? Um, I, you know, I don't even know him. I just Googled like pretentious rock star and he came up. Um, <laughs> he might be a really, really nice guy, um, I think. And um, uh, so let me talk about it. Uh, alphas like can he say things, if my mentee surpasses me, I have succeeded. A-holes hoard information for pride or job security. A-holes finish their code and leave early. Alphas are bottom focused, making sure that nobody's left behind. Like, we're building up, you're not getting left behind. Um, LeBron James is like a fantastic, true alpha on a team. He's also super gifted, but he passes more than anybody else. That's like a huge gift of his ability. Like, literally, like, here you go. You can make the shot, even though we all know he can make the shot, right? Um, the problem is that the Cavs are old school alpha focused. So they were like, well, we hired LeBron James, so I don't know, we'll just fill in. It's like, the year the Cavs won the comp competition, <laughs> you see my sports ability, the, they <laughs> scored the most points to win the game. <laughs> um, like, uh, they, um, he, uh, like, um, if he even stopped for a minute to like rub his wrist or like, a limp would be like, oh no, we're gonna lose! Like, because it was all just, it was all LeBron. Who was even on the team that year other than him? And two, a couple of people were like, oh well, this guy, I don't really care. Um, there was just a, um, it was all about LeBron. It's LeBron's world. The definition of power is the transfer of energy, not the hoarding of energy. A battery doesn't have power. A battery has power when it's exporting that power. Um, Sam Rayburn, any jackass can kick down a barn. It takes a good carpenter to build one. And uh, that is the um, heart of good culture. Cynicism kills. Um, it kills creativity. It destroys hearts. And it ends dreams before they can even begin. Hey, I'm thinking about building. It's stupid. Hey, um, is programming something someone with depression might want? No. Like, um, this sort of cynicism, it has to start with us to be like, to rehuman people. Um, and our leaders, your leadership. And I don't mean leader as in, you can be a leader even if you're not the official leader. Your leadership guides your culture, your culture guides your people, and your people guide your product. Um, strong sense of purpose of what matters and a vision and direction and creativity wither when there's a lack of safety in a group. We are a tribal people that need to be like hanging out because they were like saber-toothed tigers or whatever, you know, and they're like, everyone stick together. This is a spear, you have to imagine it. <laughs> like. Um, and uh, we're, we're, a, we're a tribal culture, tribal people, and uh, nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, I'm going to make my company a household name, growing our next quarter's shareholder stock value. Woo! Uh, it's not a vision that people get a hold of. Um, they want to know, am I bettering my team and the people and the world around me? At its core, people want to know that. And um, that's never been a focus in the past uh, in corporate America that we've known so far. Um, but to be true, you know, I want to build safe spaces. And when I say safe space, it gets made fun of a little bit on the internet. Um, uh, and, these, and these are all people that are like toxic people on the internet, like safe space, what do you think is this, kindergarten? Like, and uh, when most people think safe space, they're like, just a group of people exactly like me. Um, that's my, I don't need, you don't feel comfortable here? Like, that's your problem. And uh, even though it's said from the confines of their own safe space, right? Like, you know, which is, we all are looking for safe space, right? Direction ears? Who's with me? One direct, no? Okay. Um, and um, we're all looking for a safe space. So to say that there is no safe space is just a not a true thing. Um, and so in a lot of ways, I'd say to different people, like, you keep using that word. Safe space. I do not think it means what you think it means, right? Um, safe space is not just like, hey, everyone um, has to be like me, right, in the safe space. The safe space, a safe team, is one where these questions are answered. Are we safe here, and are there dangers lurking? You've heard of the lizard brain before? People think about their lizard brain, which is funny, because evolutionarily, I don't think we are ever lizards, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know. Um, but the lizard brain, like lizards are just like, Gitch all the time, like, oh, you know, like, I'm so freaked out all the time. Like, um, if anybody's ever had a lizard at a pet, they're like the most emotionally distant pet ever. Um, like, if you have an iguana as a pet. Oh, 
I'm doing things. I'll be here all night. Um, and uh, that's an iguana. Um, there, you know, the lizard brain's just like. And there's no creativity. There's no ability to build a better culture with the lizard brain because um, there's dangers lurking, right? Like, um, when there's fire in your house, if you wake up and your living room's on fire, you know, um, you think I should not have covered that Bitcoin miner in pillows. Um, <laughs> like, you're like. Um, you're not like, huh, let me think about the philosophy of a fire. And like, like I'm going to paint, this is going to be a great photo later. Or like, you're just like, get out! You know, you're freaking out. And like, um, the danger's lurking, right? You don't, there's no room for creativity when you feel like you're not safe in a place. Um, and our teams are like that. Uh, um, a healthy team is you before me and we before me. Um, I interviewed, uh, I mock interviewed with this lady one time when I was preparing for like a tech interviews. And she goes, you keep saying we did something. She's like, talk about what you did. And um, which I was, I kind of realized was good advice, but I also realized like software is too big for me anymore. Like it just, it has to be a we activity. Um, have you heard of the company Overture? Uh, they were the main competitor to Google for AdWords. Um, you don't know, nobody knows who Overture is now. But Wired Magazine said Google didn't win because it was smarter, it won because it was safer with your ideas. You are different than I am, but I welcome you here, and I want to hear your idea, right? You want everyone, everyone, every company wants to improve their diversity. So what do they do? Of course, like everyone, you just find diverse staff, you know, um, stock photos online of a bunch of multinational, you know, people like sitting, like laughing in fall, of course. Um, and uh, you put that on your website, and like, bam, diversity is going to roll in. And, um, and <laughs> to which I'd say, stop trying to make diversity happen. It's not going to happen. Um, I'm old, and so I get a Mean Girls reference. But um, uh, what is just trying to force diversity? You think that like, y you know, diversity happens when you're just like, well, I don't know. What do I put out a, put out decorations for Diwali. Like, of course we're going to have people come here. Like, no, you're not a safe place for diverse people. And I don't mean diverse, I mean like diverse like me, the most non-diverse person, in all honesty. But I have like weird, um, okay. Um, my ADD is medicated, so I actually am able to sort of stop that one. Like, I should tell this story. No, you shouldn't. Roll it back. And, um, and uh, it's not a bad story, it's just a long, and I'm explaining it. Um, so uh, like, uh, Diversity is, um, let me tell this story, which I did have in my notes. I had a professor who was a um, Native American First Nations people in America. Um, and uh, I'm in seminary, and the professor, um, he says, churches call them up, and they go, and they're like, we're having a service where we're going to apologize for the sins of, um, you know, everything that we did, <laughs> all of it. Um, will you come and... Um, and the whole thing is just weird. Like, I mean, will you come as our token um, Native American that represents all Native Americans? And um, you know, and they will. And what they do is they bring them on stage, and they'd be like, "We're sorry." And they really meant it. They were like really sorry, right? But one time, um, Randy was his name. He he comes. Um, he was pulling into his neighborhood. His next door neighbors are in the same, um, literally in the same tribe, and uh, they knew where he was coming from. And they, when he pulled in the driveway, they yelled to him, and they go. Hey, pastor, you get any land back? <laughs> and uh, he thought it was funny, um, and it is kind of funny, but um, uh, true unity, belonging, and diversity always costs something. When you give someone a voice, you give them power. Um, you must give them that power. You can't be like, oh, we're, we're diverse. Like, I'm going to hire you, and yeah, you, and you. No, none of your ideas are welcome here, though. You know, just do work on some testing. Don't even come to this. Like, that's, that is like so cool. I hired, I made like a number that I hired, diverse people, right? But diverse people arrive with diverse ideas and diverse ways of communicating and diverse ways of working those ideas. Like, you have to be a safe place um, for diversity to happen because it's not going to happen with some stock photos. That's not based on actual scientific evidence. I just think stock photos don't work. Um, we have to rehuman each other. Like we have to be like like light. Like when we see a star's light, it's been traveling for e eons of time through gases and explosions and the universe that come to 
to arrive in my eye socket for me to be like, hmm, you know, um, not, in, not realizing like the journey this has been. So this person arriving at your door, just, or, you know, hired on your team, be like, I don't know, like the eons of time, you know, or years of time that brought them to where they are. You need to think about that and make it a safe place because they're humans and not just code machines. Um, let's do a quick experiment. For 10 seconds, I'm, um, I want you to, not yet, but I want you to close your eyes and think about the people who came before you, who helped you, who encouraged you, a parent, a teacher, a grandparent, a friend, a mentor, whatever. And, and just, just think about them. Not for any, just think about them. Ready? And go. And stop. Okay. Do you know that if you took a cognitive test right now, you'd actually have, you'd actually score better? There's like a lot of scientific evidence about that. That literally in your brain, realizing you are connected to people will make you perform better on a test. Like, and so then we imagine like, I don't know, like we're constantly making inappropriate jokes here and we're all like the same, you know, I can only speak for my, like we're all white male, nerdy white males and like, what's it, like uh, why is she weird? You know, and you're like, oh, this is not like a safe space, right? This is, and she's not feeling connected here. And she's not going to get the best, you're not going to get any good work. And she's not going to be satisfied. And you're going to lose your diversity because it's not a safe space. Um, can I borrow your phone? Has that ever happened to you while you're standing somewhere? And like, in, you know, you're on a bus stop and it's like, can I borrow your phone? Um, so a, uh, Allison Wood Brooks, Harvard Business School, did a test where um, she would, uh, they just hundreds and hundreds of people on a, can I borrow your phone? Can I borrow your phone? Can I borrow your phone? And um, six words changed it, changed the results. And it would say, I'm so sorry about the rain. Can I borrow your phone? People were 422% more likely to say, yes, you can borrow my phone, simply because I initiated the conversation by going, we're both connected here in the rain. And then you go, yes, we are you may borrow my phone, right? Um, that connectivity is literally thinking about someone who was connected to you improves your brain. Um, and just saying it on, like, we are geared for this. Uh, that's why I'm like harping it so much. Have you ever heard of the Harvard test of inflicted acquis acquisition? Um, it is a test um, from the Harvard psychologist Robert Rosenthal he went to a California public school and he offered to test the school's students with a newly developed intelligence identification tool. It predicted which students would excel academically in the coming years. And it nailed it 100%, right? Every student that they said, this student is gonna excel. In first graders, the ones who were pointed out had 27% IQ point improvement over 12 of their classmates who were not selected. In second graders, a 17, I mean 17 IQ point improvement versus seven. But here's the funny thing about the Harvard test of inflicted acquisition. It's completely made up, and it was just random. It was like, you're smart, you're smart, she's smart, you're smart, right? And then teachers, because they actually just thought this person's smart, were like treated them better with kindness, and they got smarter. Um, and uh, that is the cool thing about when we rehuman each other, and stop thinking that, like, so this guy on the team's like a moron. You know, like, what do you mean you don't know how to do this thing? You know, um, and uh, when we actually think, this person's smart, I just don't understand them yet because they're a human being with intrinsic value, we'll actually treat them smarter and they actually get smarter. Um, we need to rehuman our users. Uh, so GE's been in the news a little bit recently. We had some viral stuff happen. You may have heard about it. Got posted on Reddit, right? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Well, here's the, the first one was like 30 users. We're like, that's oh, not big. Oh, 65, 70, 65, mother of God, 6,500. This video can, on how to reset G smart lights is like a parody. Is it, raise your hand, have you seen the video or laughed about it online? Okay, yeah. Um, then all these, then <laughs> um, small publications like Gizmodo, The Verge, and CNN picked up the story. Um, and uh, my thought was, I'm going to get fired. <laughs> um, 
luckily G's smart enough to realize. Um, but you know, as a team, we don't realize like, what are we gonna do, make excuses? Resign that our users are dumb? You just don't understand, it's dumb, they're dumb. Crying that it's unfair. Um, and it was honestly kind of unfair, like the whole video with us counting was literally because we'd written it out and then we're like, let's make a video that actually counts for you and it'll be great. And, and you don't have to reset your bulbs very often. Like I've had work at GE like almost a year of reset them like once, it's not, and if you make it super uncomplicated, like on, off, on, off, then your toddler resets your bulbs, right? So it's gotta be a little like confusing that someone couldn't just accidentally do, but like that doesn't go well. And everybody knows if you get online and defend yourself, that goes super well on the internet. Um, <laughs> And, uh, but, uh, like, the team, um, you know, we were like, well, it's a, let's just, like, let's take it as a, something to learn from. And, um, well, and update the firmware on your bulbs. It's not a problem. Whatever. Mm, triggered. And um, it, uh, let's be servant leaders, right? The problem is that, um, this problem is that the people feel this way about their products, and they're not morons. They're users, human beings. Um, in servant leadership, the user is the boss. They're not stupid, they're not inept, they do not have the same, they have the same intrinsic value as you. We don't remove humanity from the users. Here's two percentage points. Adam Grant, managing professor at Wharton School of Business in the University of Pennsylvania, studied why his college was having so much trouble raising money on the phone. And it was for a good cause, it was to raise scholarship money. So what did they do? They tried all sorts of different things, like you get a free this and that, like tickets to a baseball game, whatever, if you up the, but then what they did was they brought in a student who had received the scholarship to talk for five minutes on how that scholarship changed their life. And they saw a 142% improvement on the amount of calls that were going out and 171 improvement on the amount of money that was raised because we connected the person receiving it with a real human being. Um, groups that received no visit, zero change. Groups that received a, that their bosses read a story about someone who was cha life changed. Zero change. Um, you've heard of Met Milton's elect uh, um, like uh, electrocution test where they were like testing if someone could actually kill someone. Have you heard this? It's like a common psychology thing that was Milgram. Okay, so I say Milton. Uh, Milgram. And uh, long story short is it was just like this messed up. It was, it was like it was messed up. And um, nobody got electrocuted. But long story short was that um, if they removed the person from the room and you could not see them. 65% of their test subjects um, were able to push the button for a severe shock. Far lower if they were in the same room, if you can see this person. Let me do a test with you real quick. I'm gonna say two statements. Number one, estimates of the death in the Syrian civil war per opposition activity, activist groups vary, the, the esti estimates of the deaths vary between 371,222 and more than 50, um, 570,000 deaths in Syria. Here's the second one. This is a story from yesterday, CNN. A father looks with horror as his three young daughters teetering on the destroyed edge of a bombed building in northern Syria. One of them, Raham, five, grabbed the shirt of her seven-year-old sister, Tuka, in an attempt to save her from falling from the rubble. Raham hit her head on a stone when she fell and died when receiving treatment in the ambulance. Tuka, the infant, infant in the photo, survived. I actually cut the photo because it's, it, um, it's very heartbreaking. The mother and their third sister, three-year-old Rowan, their mother and their third sister, Rowan, three-year-old, died in the attack. Which one had more impact to you? The second one, but the first one, I said 500,000 people have died. And, but that's a number. Um, this guy, you may have heard of him, Stalin, said that the death of one man is a tragedy, the death of a million is a statistic. That's a quote. Um, what if your job title is the, is the leader? Do you have real power? That's my question. Do you have authority? Um, do you have both? What if I told you, I was in the mall yesterday, I saw a man with a gun walking around. You'd be like, holy cow, what happened? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? He also had a badge and a hat. You'd be like, a cop? He's like, yes saw him there and you'd be like oh. um because you have power gun but badge authority right man running through mall with gun no badge power uns with no authority freak out right or badge but no gun mall cop like <laughs> um 
<laughs> yeah. Like, it's, you know, um, power is the job title. Authority is the trust of your people. And you see, when cops um, violate their, the trust of their people, your authority doesn't matter anymore. So then they start relying on power more, right? And um, Robert Greenleaf wrote in Servant Leadership, we live at a time when holders of power are suspects and, fic and actions that stem from authority are questioned. Legitimized power has become an ethical imperative. Let me show you a picture of a real dope. <laughs> People are like, <gasps> it's not a religious figure, okay? Relax. Steve Jobs was not a dope. But he had this thing that he'd say when he'd go to his engineers. He'd actually say this. He'd go, this might be a dopey idea, but what if we, and he'd try something. And they said some of his ideas were pretty dopey. But Steve Jobs is a terrifying, you know, president of Apple, right? He can get you fired. Weirdly, get your spouse fired from her job somehow because he's Steve Jobs, right? He could ruin your life. But he was like, this might be a dopey idea because he's exuding a little bit of, um, of uh, weakness, showing that, right? I'm going to blaze through the last of my talk here. Um, ben Horowitz, if you're going to eat shit, don't nibble. <laughs> Leaders tell the truth, right? Have you heard of the um, sandwich when you're giving... You know, Dave, I love the talk, and you're really great. Everything, I love Pi Ohio. Everything sucks about it. You look good with a beard. <laughs> right? That's like a, that's the sandwich, right? Everybody knows that, and they have a boss, and they're like, hey, Greg, I noticed you uh, doing really great here now. And then you're like, here it comes. You know, we're, the, the gig is up, right? Researchers, um, in a group of psychologists from Stanford, Yale, and Columbus had middle school students write an essay after which teachers provided different kinds of feedback. This feedback was so successful, they literally termed it the magical feedback. I'm giving you these comments because I have very high expectations of you, and I know that you can reach them. This says three things. You're part of this group. You belong here. This group is special. We have high standards. And number three, I believe you can reach those standards. Um, this feedback, so forget the, you know, sandwich without a compliment, and then devastate, and then re-compliment. Like, just trusted authority leadership, because I know you care about me, right? Like, I'm, I'm picking on Ilya, but in a good way. Like, he's a good leader, dude. So he, like, told me stuff, right? I was a classic developer, and I was like, I'll roll in when I want. <laughs> I'll come into work when I want. And, um, Ilya was like, you know, it'd be cool if you were at stand-up. <laughs> and I was like, true. Um, he, didn't, he wasn't like, Greg, you look, you're like such a nice guy. You know, he was just like, hey, be, I want you part of it. Because that said to me, we want you as part of this team. Get your shit together. Um, and uh, family-friendly talk, family-friendly talk. Okay. Um, you like Huey Lewis in the news? What movie? American Psycho. Yeah, the same guy who um, did uh, that um, thing where they improved the, the, the um, donations of their team uh, looked at thousands of executives and asked them in interviews that uh, it's important that your employees' work matters. The results, 1% of executives say, it's important that my employees work, they know that their, employee, their work matters. 1%. Do you know why they say that? Because they're psychopaths. True story, actually. Um, the Journal for Behavioral Sciences, Science and Law report that senior executives tested three times more likely to be psychopaths. And I don't mean murderous psychopath. A psychopath is literally someone who's like, I don't care about your feelings or who you are as a person. Dehumanizing, right? Murderous psychopath is like, I don't care about you as a person, also I'm going to kill you. Um, <laughs> that last part is the important difference, but we have built this thing where we, we support that, to be like, you versus you. Hey, I need someone to fire a bunch of people on Christmas Eve, and you raise your hand first. Cool, do it. And then you go, and I go, leadership material right here. Well, like, it, they're going to bubble up to the top, right? And the gig is up. Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase. Are they in the room? said, we support our workers and love them and everything is great. 
Moving on. Um, okay. Uh, servant leaders fight for their tribe. They make tough decisions. They fire people. Servant leaders are warriors. They're not just nice guys, nice girls, nice people. I apologize. Um, they are not just nice. They're kind. And they do what's right for their team because they're a servant. And if you're a toxic individual, they fire you. Gary Vaynerchuk said, I'll fire someone all the time, even they're a star employee, because I don't do this for the money, which is amazing. That would disrupt people. Like, I'm your star. I got the most sales. You're toxic, and you're out. And uh, be like, oh, this old system worked for me, because the gig is, yes. Um, Robert Green, do those served under you grow as persons, or around you grow as persons? Do they, while being served, become healthier, wiser, freer, more autonomous, more likely? more likely themselves to become servants? And what is the effect on the least privileged in society? Will they benefit or at least not be further deprived? <laughs> but we celebrate Diwali. It doesn't matter if your team is not a safe place where we... You think diversity improves with stock images? It's not. My prediction is that without safety and belonging, you will never see diversity in your team because diverse people have diverse ideas, diverse ways of communicating them. And if you're not a leader who creates belonging, you are not a leader. True leaders give what they have most, and it's their time. And this is the last two slides. This is the mark of a good software developer. I mean, how many people over 30, and I am, I'm actually closer to 40, but I moisturize, um, <laughs> as, uh, um, is, uh, who have ever called themselves grumpy old devs? Yeah, grumpy old devs. It's like a thing, we're like a grumpy old dev. I am cynical, you're a little prideful. But I'm very untrusting millennials ruining everything. Um, depending on what article you read, I'm either the oldest millennial or the youngest Gen X. Um, so I hate both. And. Um, <laughs> We can move from this to this, this to this. I want to see the best out of you. The gig is up. Last thing I'm going to say. Leaders can no longer treat people as consumables. Customers can no longer be nameless. We lost count at 400 people at my dad's funeral. He's just an engineer for Motorola who was never a leader. But um, imagine if you lead your team and you ship version 1.0 and you're retiring or you're on your deathbed. But either way, you're, not, you're done with the project. And um, <laughs> one less refactor. <laughs> um, all code gets refactored. One day your code will be rewritten unless it's in COBOL, which will never be touched again. <laughs> um, I don't want you and your team's journey to the mountaintop to be lost into the ether. What if you open the camera of your life? Because I was going to tell a story out of time about my dad went to take a photo and he like set up this whole thing about a sunset. And we drove like an hour and a half to get up to the top of the mountain, took a bunch of photos, got in the car, went to wind it, free spinning, opened it up, no film. <laughs> it had no film in the camera. What if you opened the camera of your life and saw that no lasting change, no cultural movement, no healing of broken people, being a leader who serves first and, not, and it, when I mean a leader, I don't mean like manager, and everyone else can ignore this. I mean like member of the tribe, servant, who makes it a safe place for people with you, who sees the person getting railroaded and says, Let's, you tell me more about that, or brings them in because we're a tribe. Being a leader who serves first will help you ship a product that's scientifically proven that you will deliver more. But that's not what matters. What matters is how you change the lives of those around you, in your tribe, which we are a tribe here. And when you go back to your jobs, the tribe, your open source community, the tribe. Being a leader who serves first will help you ship your product, but that's not what matters. What matters is how you change the lives of those around you. You know you're ending on a good note when it's dead silent. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>